Hello, everyone. My name is Anaï Kaldu, and I am very happy to be here. I would first like to thank the Scientific Organizing Committee for giving me the chance to present these two projects here. And I will share my screen so that you can see my presentation, which has for title Astronomy in the Land of Avocados. So this is a map of Mexico, and this highlighted state here is Michoacán. To place you a bit in context, Michoacán is responsible for 45% of world's avocado production. So it's a lot. If you like avocados, it's a great place to be. Uh, one of the problems with this is that avocado plants are very good in hiding other types of plants. And Michoacán, unfortunately, has a lot of narco-traffic. It is one of the 10 most dangerous states in Mexico and it has around four and a half million inhabitants. So why did these two projects happen here? Well, Morelia is the capital city of Michoacán. I show it here in white. And in Morelia, there's a campus of the Un National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM. And in this campus, there's the Institute for Radio Astronomy and Astrophysics, IRIA. And I worked there in 2017, 2018, and that's where I carried out these projects. So the first project has to do with beginning with what is closest to us. So here again, you have a larger map of Morelia. The city center is where Morelia stands. And then here in the, in the blue square, you can see where UNAM campus actually is. So it's in, in the outskirts of the city. And just across the street, this street, which is actually a small highway, there's a neighborhood, a very large neighborhood called Tenencia Morelos. So they are very close by, but it's like living in two different worlds. Here I show you a couple of pictures of UNAM, of the campus. You can see that below there's even in the, in the picture below, you can even see there's an open air museum and the campus is very green, very well taken care of. And across the street, we have Tenencia Morelos, which is a very poor neighborhood with a lot of delinquency. Most of its inhabitants don't have high school work as farmers or go to the United States to work and then send money back. So this is a very these are very contrasting realities that unfortunately is a common problem in Mexico where we have a lot of inequalities. And an anecdote a friend told me once, I think expresses very well which kind of tension these inequalities can raise. So on campus, some of us used to go running around campus after work. And one time this colleague from astronomy was jogging and he was jogging next to the fence that divides the university from the outside. And then a, a, a farmer was coming back from work carrying all his tools. And then he sees this guy running on this gray, green paradise and he yells at him like, get to work. So, I mean, it can sound funny, but it really shows with that there's a lot of tension because of this inequality. And because of this, it's sometimes very hard to, to break the distance and, and have successful outreach activities. So actually, there's a lot of outreach activities happening on campus. Astronomy also, the, the Institute of Radio Astronomy and Astrophysics also holds uh, a, a monthly conference in astronomy, but asking with surveys where, come the, where the people come from, there was nobody coming from Tenencia Morelos to these series of conferences. So that, that didn't sound good to me. And that's why I proposed this first project in collaboration with other institutes. So the project is called UNAM in Your Neighborhood and the institutes that were collaborating with it were the Center for Mathematics, uh, the Institute of Research in Ecosystems and Sustainability, and the Center of Research in uh, Environmental Geography. So the idea was to go to this neighborhood, Tenencia Morelos, which has different plazas, actually, it's a, it's a large tenencia, a large neighborhood. And the idea was to, every two months, go to a different plaza and hold their outreach activities. 
uh, talking to the people there and asking why they don't come to university, they told us that one of the reasons is because they didn't know it was open for everybody because these days fences and everything. So they think it's a closed space. So talking to them, it's easier to tell them like, no, I mean, you're actually invited to come. But also a problem is the distance, even though it's only two kilometers away, walking this distance for young people or for children, it's sometimes impossible. And more if you hold activities at night, which is usually what we astronomers do to be able to also have observations with a telescope. So bringing the activities to the plazas help to start this communication to see what the problems are. And well, to know how to do diffusion of the events because one would think nowadays that social media are the way to go, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok now, but talking to the people and talking to the, to the authorities of the, this neighborhood, we realized that we were incorrect. And they told us that the best way to let people know there that something is going on is to print posters and put them on the local meat shop, for example. And another interesting way of, of passing information is with a megaphone. So the authorities have this car with a megaphone and when there's some, some inf important information, they drive around and they pass this information. So we did it like that and it was very successful. I will in the next couple of slides show you some of the pictures. Unfortunately, we didn't think about hiring a professional photographer to take some pictures. So, so, so some of them are not very high quality, but they will give you an idea. So for example, here in ecology, with very rudimentary tools, uh, cinema was built on the basketball court, but it was still good to be able to show, show films on ecology. Math was a real success with this papyroflexi workshop in which lots of people attended. And this type of activity also gives a very good opportunity to talk to, to the publics and understand what they are interested in and getting information on, on the neighborhood. Geography, so you can also see there's different uh, ages attending these activities from this very old man to these very young children and the activities are intended to, to be also fun so that children are more interested in, in taking part. And finally, astronomy, which is what matters to us the most. Uh, as I told you before, it's very hard for them to come at night to the university. So we brought the telescopes to the neighborhood. We gave a public talk and it was a real success. All these people doing the line had never seen through a telescope before. So there was a lot of excitement and it was a very happy day. And I think we all were, were very happy with the result. And well, to measure a bit the success of these activities, I would like to uh, share with you that on the next conferences on campus of the Astronomy Institute and doing the surveys, the families from Tenencia Morelos started coming. So for me, that was already a success. Like we broke this inertia of being two separate communities. And the second project I would like to tell you about, I did in collaboration with Bernardo Cervantes Sodi, also an astronomer, and Mercedes Martinez and Claudia Escalera, who are professors at the university there, um, UNAM in Morelia, on the social sciences. So this project was a mixture between social sciences and astronomy, and I will tell you why. So first, it was called knowledge exchange, and it was more ambitious in the sense that we wanted to get outside of the city to go to these communities like Santa Fe de la Laguna, these towns, and Guanajo, which are about 40 kilometers away from Morelia. So it's not a great distance, but if you think of public outreach and people attending, it's already a very large distance to cover, and more when there's no real good public transportation and there's these security issues. So the activities, uh, consisted of on three parts. The first one was an outreach activity of astronomy. So there were, were also public talks given in the plazas of these towns. So you can see also here, there was a very good attendance and with a various ages and it was very, very nice. And also observations with a telescope. Again, I mean, in these small towns, a telescope is something like science fiction. 
So apart from the outreach activity, we also prepared some kits with material to be able to, to show some of the aspects of astronomy. And there were workshops held for teachers so that they could learn how to use these kits and then be able to, to show astronomical aspects constantly in the classroom. So that it would not only be an outreach activity and then we go away and maybe we come back a year later or never come back. So they keep these kits and they keep the contact with us. So, so in case they need anything, they can always send us an email or call us and then we can help them. And finally, the last part of this project, which I find the most revolutionizing, is this mixture with social sciences. So the people from social sciences uh, had meetings with the people from the community so that they could talk about the problems the community has and then see if some of the areas in the university could help solve in in collaboration with the community, these problems. So for example, in the university, there's this environmental geography and, uh, and ecosystems and sustainability. So, so they can help with maybe giving advice on how to do some crops, crop mixture so that the land works better, etc. And that was very interesting, very nice. Unfortunately, the pandemic hit afterwards. So in this moment, it has not been easy to continue working, but that's the idea. So this very briefly shows the, the, the idea of this last project, which is that through knowledge exchange in two directions, we can try maybe solve community problems. We can do some science outreach and there can be teacher workshops. So finally, I would like to share with you my take home messages. The first one is that we need to know our publics even to know how to diff make diffusion of the events we want to, to, to have so that we reach the people we want the, the, these events to go. Um, then it's essential to have a two-way communication. We need to, to, to learn from each other. Everybody plays an important role in society and it's very important that we go on the outreach activities knowing this and not only trying to teach we have to learn also from, from our publics. And finally, I think it's also super important to have continuity and not only have activities that take place once per year and then forget about it until next year, we should implement mechanisms to be able to be there more often. And well, with this, I finish. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm open for any questions you might have.